Is your eye twitching really, really driving you crazy? Well, keep watching to find out what you can do to stop it. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong, board certified ophthalmologist, and on this channel we talk about eye health, eye surgery, kids' eyes, and a little bit of eye makeup health. Today we're gonna to be talking about eyelid twitching. Now this is something that I have experienced on numerous occasions all throughout my life because it's something that just happens. Now, bottom line, it is normal and it is not anything to worry about. The fancy medical term for it is eyelid myokinia. And basically it just means an involuntary spasm of the muscles around the eye, typically the orbicularis oculi muscle around the eye. It usually causes a little bit of an eyelid twitch, the outer corners of the eye, but sometimes can be the inner corners, top or bottom eyelid. Now, the three biggest reasons that people get eyelid twitching is caffeine, stress, and fatigue. You see how they're all connected though, right? I call it the trifecta, and it is like a cycle. You are tired, the fatigue, you drink more caffeine, caffeine tends to make you a little more stressed out, then you can't sleep, and on and on and on it goes. We gotta break that cycle. And I'm also gonna be talking to you about a couple additional reasons that can cause your eyelid myokinia as well that we can tackle and hopefully get you feeling a lot better. Now, eyelid myokinia is different than benign essential blepharospasm. Blepharospasm is bilateral. It is a bilateral forceful closure of both eyes. It almost looks like the person is blinking like this. And it's involuntary as well. That is different than the eyelid twitching or myokinia. Typically the myokinia is unilateral, just in one eye. So again, if you're interested in benign essential blepharospasm, I'm gonna be having an entire video on that, but that is not this. This is myokinia, which is the twitching that affects more people than blepharospasm usually does. But let's get back to it. All right, I said the trifecta. The trifecta of things that cause the myokinia. Pretty much all throughout medical school and residency, I had one eyelid twitching or another because I was chronically <sighs> sleep deprived. You're pulling like 60, 80 hour work weeks. You are drinking so much caffeine, especially as a sub eye or an intern, and you're stressed. You wanna make sure you're doing a great job for your patients and you're learning all these new skills. So I remember I had this constantly. I also had this a lot right after giving birth because after giving birth, my baby was up all the time. So of course I wasn't getting a lot of sleep, but let's tackle each one, of course. So first let's start with fatigue. Now you want to get as much rest as possible. And here's a couple things that I do to help combat that. First, I do think that most people forget that they should have evening and bedtime routines. They think bedtime routines are just for kids, but actually they're great for adults too. And I think it's really important to establish a really good nighttime routine. And part of that does include being off of a device two hours before bedtime. Now I say that and I'm always on my device right up until I go to bed. So if you are, I'm kind of like say is, do as I say and not as I do kind of thing. That's what I recommend for my kids, right? And I recommend for my patients that have eyelid myokinia because you want to get as much rest as possible. But put your, your screen on dark mode, put your device on dark mode, you can wear blue light glasses because it will decrease the amount of blue light that's being emitted. Now, a lot of the studies on blue light glasses have been very mixed in terms of whether or not it helps with eye fatigue, eye strain, or headaches. But there have been some studies about how blue light can interfere with your sleep and cause more morning grogginess. So I do wear my blue light glasses if I am Netflix binge watching up until I go to sleep or if I am charting. So that's something you might wanna do as well. Second, I actually have an app on my phone because I do tend to just start watching a lot of shows on repeat. Oh, I'm just gonna watch one more episode of Ted Lasso. I have a, an app on my phone and really we got it for our kids, but it shuts the Wi-Fi off at a certain time so that I don't feel like I, constantly just watching and it just puts a limit on it. Of course I can turn it back on, but if it shuts off, then I know, hey, I should be going to bed by now. It's just another little trigger for me to get into that good nighttime routine. Having a nighttime routine is really important at decreasing the fatigue that can cause eyelid myokinia. Second, stress. Now I mentioned medical school, I had so much stress. There are so many periods in my life 
where I've been stressed out. I have three children. I mean, is my life like constantly stressful? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But if you can find something, meditation, yoga, there's so many great apps, Headspace, Peloton, things that can really get you um, in a better frame of mind. Now, that's something that, again, I always need a lot of work on at decreasing the amount of stress in my life. But the key is going to be to not just reach for that caffeine when you are feeling stressed out. You want to stop that cycle and you want to start implementing some healthier habits. I'm not a lifestyle physician, but I'm just saying, if you want a natural way to stop your eyelid myokinia, decreasing the amount of stress that you have or dealing with it in better ways is going to be a huge step in the right direction at minimizing it. And then caffeine. Let's get to the caffeine. Now it's not just coffee. You know that green tea has actually more caffeine than coffee. I know, I used to always think green tea was so much healthier and had less caffeine, but your teas also, unless they're herbal, are going to have caffeine as well. So you need to really be mindful about your milligrams of caffeine intake a day. And if you start instituting better sleep patterns, then hopefully you won't feel the need to reach for all of that caffeine. Now for me, Coffee is just part of my morning routine. I drink four Nespresso's. I know, it's kind of crazy, four Nespresso's. My husband's like, how many are you going through? Why do I need to keep ordering these every month, like so many? It's part of my routine, but I have switched now the last two of the day to decaf. I just like having a cup of Nespresso with my almond milk creamer. It's just delicious to me, and it's just my routine of when I settle in and I'm, I'm working hard. So. Whatever you need to do to be mindful of the amount of caffeine, switching to decaf is obviously a very easy way. I know a lot of ophthalmologists since our surgeries are so small. When I'm doing surgery, I don't drink any caffeine because I don't wanna get any kind of tremor. And a lot of ophthalmologists then transition completely away from anything and they just drink hot water in the morning and they just substituted that as their routine. I'm not there yet, but maybe you might be. Now, two lesser known causes for eyelid myokinia are dry eyes and alcohol. Dry eyes can cause that eyelid twitching. So you want to treat the underlying cause. And this is where a visit to your eye doctor is really important as well. You don't wanna just self-treat with Visine. It's not the best, that just usually masks and covers up the symptoms. There are so many different causes for dry eyes. There can be inadequate tear production, there can be tear evaporation, and want to get at the underlying cause. And that's usually going to be in conjunction with your ophthalmologist, whether it's lubricating with artificial tears, doing hot compresses, taking omega-3 vitamin supplements. Usually with your eye doctor, you can come to a good treatment strategy if he did, or she determines that to be the cause for your myokinia or just for dry eyes, which is always good to treat. And then the last one, alcohol. Alcohol can cause eyelid myokinia as well. So you want to be really mindful and decrease your alcohol intake. Just take a hard look as to how much you're drinking and make sure that it's not something that's excessive. Now, when is eyelid twitching a cause for concern? If it's happening bilaterally in both eyes, if it doesn't go away after a few weeks. Now I mentioned I had this all throughout my medical school training, but it wasn't constant. So, you know, it would come on two or three times a year. So if it's something that's constant and doesn't improve, then you definitely want to see your ophthalmologist. If your entire eye closes completely, not just a twitch, but a closure, that forceful contracture, and if other parts of your face, specifically the upper part of your lip or your mouth itself, starts to get involved in the twitching and the whole half of your face, it's called hemifacial spasm, is becoming involved, then those are reasons to see your ophthalmologist because it may necessitate an MRI or an MRA of the neck to check for lesions in this particular area, which can compress the facial nerve and can be causing some of this twitching. There's also a lot of medical conditions that can cause blepharospasm. That's the spasm of both eyes, like multiple sclerosis, Tourette's, Parkinson's, Bell's palsy. So if you have any of those medical conditions, then you might not actually be experiencing myokinia, but instead blepharospasm. And I urge you to see your ophthalmologist. 
But hopefully if you try to stop that trifecta, the caffeine fatigue stress trifecta, and also are really mindful about dry eyes and alcohol, hopefully that should help you get a good handle on that eyelid twitching. Thanks so much for watching everyone. And please let me know what kind of content I can provide for you guys. That just helps me make a channel full of stuff that you all want to see. Until next time, I'm Dr. Rupa. Bye for now.